Hi! <laughs> I sent the, uh, the, like, warning that the face was coming, and then, um, realized I hadn't turned on the microphone or the captions, so those are done now. But, um, hi everybody! <laughs> I hope that your weekend is going well, I hope that, uh, that Sunday is treating you well. Um, yeah, uh, I, I see a Lord Portico, hello, welcome. Uh, I see, let's see, I see Puddle Glum at the science station. Mobius Tempest, hello. Key squared, it is indeed Sunday. <laughs> uh, I hope what you were editing was engaging and, and good editing? I don't know. Is there good editing? Um, <laughs> I have been so easily pulled into things lately. Like, I mentioned on yesterday's stream that the night before, I had spent hours going through all the phones, all the phones on my pictures, all the pic all the photos on my phone, um, and deleting everything that I didn't need anymore, all the screen captures and things like that that I didn't need, and organizing them into albums. It was, I don't know why I did it, but I did, and it's done, and yay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. And then this morning, I went to bed at the regular time. And oddly, I woke up before my alarm, which normally on the weekends I struggle to get up at all. Uh, and I woke up before my alarm and I was having this weird dream. Uh... Oh no, overtime this morning, ugh. Fan fiction and not work, that's good. Um, I'm glad that you're off work now. Waiting for an Instacart delivery so you can make a scrambled eggs. Nice. Um, I had a, a, a toaster strudel this morning. Um, but yeah, I, I got up and so the dream, I, I actually had a dream that I somewhat recall, which was I was awakened <laughs> in the middle of dreaming, and the dream was that I logged into Twitter and, like, everybody I was following had deleted their account, and I had, like, five people that I was following, um, which was really believable. So when I logged into Twitter this morning, I was like, oh, that didn't happen. Uh, but honestly, <laughs> the way things are trending, I would be surprised if uh, if people stay on there for extended lengths of time. Um, I don't know. And, and somehow, things will level out. We will all figure out 
what we're comfortable using and find a new home. And I don't know that I have the energy for more than one, possibly two social media sites um, long term. And right now, I am trying to juggle um, the bird app and the pachyderm app and the hellscape that is Instagram owned by Meta. And uh, my attention was recalled to um, Hive which I made an, I reserved my username in February of 2021, but never used it. And so I got that set up this morning. Um, and actually, I kind of like it. I hope, like, they're still developing. Uh, I guess they started in 2019 and a bunch of people joined in 2021. But I think a lot of them were like me saying, oh, better, it's this new thing. And it, it sort of was blowing up. And so it was, go reserve your username. Um, it's getting more activity now, which is nice. Um, and it sort of combines a bunch of features from Instagram, Twitter, and MySpace. Uh, and so far, it's nice. They do need to implement alt text for images, uh, which does not exist yet. No one's giving you a good explanation of Mastodon. Um, so, <sighs> the difference between Discord and Mastodon is that Mastodon is interconnectable in a way that Discord isn't. Um, so you've got the server that you create an account on, and your default home feed just gives you posts that were put on that well, OK, so your default home feed is people that you follow. And I believe any posts in your local server. Um, you can get a feed that's just posts in your local server. But then also, they have the federated timeline, which is a timeline of all posts on all servers. And you have access to that. And regardless of what server your account exists on, you can follow and boost and like and interact with um, the posts by users on any other server, unless your server blocks a server, which happens for various reasons, a lot of them having to do with um, each server sets their own rules of what's acceptable. And if there are other servers that promote or um, are heavily populated by content that is not acceptable on your server, your server admins might block that server so that their users who have agreed to abide by a certain set of uh, social conduct um, just don't see the content from that server. And that would be the only time that you wouldn't be able to interact with users and their content on a different server. So uh, maybe that will help make it a little more sensible. Um, it seems to me it's less free. Uh, so there are a couple of issues. Um, uh, kind of, yeah, like mini Twitters linked together, except that they're they're not exactly like Twitter. Um, they're all just spun up by somebody. Like, there are a couple companies that have big ones. Um, some of the big ones are the ones that the smaller servers block because they're not as good at content moderation. Um, but because a lot of the servers are really small and just run by somebody off of their own local machine, um, there is the chance that they disappear. And they have to pay for the storage. Somebody has to pay for the storage for the server. Sometimes they'll have like donation links where you can donate money to help support the server. 
but otherwise, um, there's more of a focus on text-based content and uh, still images uploading like high resolution videos not really a polite thing to do because they take up a lot of space and um, cost money to store and so uh, the etiquette is a bit different um, self-promotion basically every server wants you to content warning self-promotion um, and in fact one of the servers I was on uh, that I had been active on before I started streaming and wanted to post go live links or go live posts um, says that they support you in promoting yourself but to delist it and to do all these other things that basically make it so it will never be seen by anybody um, and to not post it too much. So as a streamer wanting to post, hey, I'm live now, um, that wasn't going to work on that server. And so I shut down that one and just redirected to uh, my current Mastodon on Mastodon.social. Um, I mean, that was back in like 2019 or 2020 that I did that. Um, so a lot of people are like, I don't understand why people don't like Mastodon. And it's like, well, as creators, we want to self-promote. And Mastodon communities in general don't like people doing self-promotion. So, yes, there are some great things about Mastodon, but for certain use cases, it's not the greatest. Um, Hive looks good for that, except it's only on mobile. And while they've been working to get an Android app r up and running since 2020, it's their Android app is still in beta. There's no web interface for it, which is a hurdle for me, personally. But it has some nice things. Um, it's very supportive of video. It has a built-in GIF search. It's got um, the ability to have your profile page uh, with custom colors, and you can put um, music on your profile page the way that you used to be able to on your MySpace. Um, so s some of it is, it has some nice features. Um, it got a big influx last night because Star Wars officially joined Hive and told the, the like, a lot of the Star Wars creators also went and joined Hive, and um, so it was actually Christina Ariel uh, posting about it last night that reminded me that I had a Hive account. <laughs> so Mastodon communities in general do not have the legal and compliance infrastructure necessary to deal with advertising of content that may contain copyrighted material. This is true. Um, Mastodon is good for just like a conversation, just text-based. And and so in some ways, it really is like a interoperable version of old bulletin board systems. Um, yeah, key squared. I'm not super fond of the fact that it's only mobile. I hope they have a web version that will be coming at some point. Um, that would be amazing. Be right, UK! The morning hand of time is giving us yet another regal wave. Welcome back for 23 months. It's great to have you. I hope things are going well for you. Uh, we've been talking about social media. Um, a large pointy hat. What? A uh, regal wave. <laughs> no, no, no. Rule, Brita Rule Britannia was part of the soundtrack of yesterday's game. Um, there is no Rule Britannia in space. Or at least not in my space. <laughs> the fact that we've been talking about social media and I mentioned MySpace a few minutes ago, I reached the end of that sentence and um, stumbled across an unintended uh, reference. <laughs> typically means a briefcase. Oh, dear. Um, 
I mean, sorry, my mind just decided that a briefcase was used for carrying around briefs and not boxers. <laughs> Going to space and only briefs is against terms of service. What? <laughs> so close. <laughs> Oh, and I was just talking about how Star Wars um, had set up like an official like Star Wars account on on Hive and and just realized I'm wearing my this Star Wars shirt. Um, also, uh, one of the good things about Hive and I'm just going to like it is extremely pro LGBTQ. Just overall. It is very supportive. So, yeah. <laughs> Rules on going to space and unmentionables. Um, let's see. I don't know that I have a whole lot to... Come. Oh, gosh, be right, UK. 250 bits! Thank you! You would not want to carry Muhammad Ali around in a briefcase? Floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. I am... I understand... I don't understand... Huh? I don't know. That comes across as a non secular to me, and I'm I'm oh boxers! Oh my god! Thank you. I couldn't. I wasn't making the connection. Uh, amazing and excellently done. <laughs> Line between bad idea and awful is important. That whew, just completely over my head. Um, but excellent, excellent work. Um, so I do, I should mention um, tomorrow night's stream for me uh, will be Mist 3, uh, starting at 7. And that will be the last stream I do until the following Monday. Um, my work closes at noon on Wednesday, which means I wouldn't have an archives stream this week. And I need a break. I need like an actual break. Um, and so I'm just not going to stream next weekend so that I have Wednesday afternoon, all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday, and all day Sunday as a break. <laughs> so you were hoping it was going to say, oh, no, I haven't updated it. Updating it is one of my checklist items for prepping for the upcoming stream. And that item wasn't on the list to do this past week because there was no stream coming up. So no, I haven't updated it. You can change it to something else if you want. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, I'm Philip is actually going to be out of town, um, which means I have to cook for myself. But uh, it also means that I just have some an extended period of unstructured time. Ooh, 250 more bits in, in honor of self care. Thank you. <laughs> I am looking forward to having um, an extended period of unstructured time, like time some actual time where I don't have anything on my schedule that needs to happen other than Eric's streams. But because <laughs> there's no, I, I won't not go to those. I, I will definitely still be there uh, watching those. But um, but I'll be able to actually like just decompress a little. I have some creative projects I've wanted to do that I just have not been able to do because I've been so worn out that even just doing them, I'm just like, I look at them and I'm like, yeah, I want to, but not right now. I don't have the brain for it. So <laughs> the ship will be docked for Baryon sweeps on Tuesday through Sunday of next week. Please, for the love of all the gods, do not forget your saddle. Uh, there has not. I don't know if we have anything 
fishing related. I can't say that I've ever run across anything fishing related specifically in our archives. Uh, that's not to say that it doesn't exist. And I know Clay, like Clater Lake has good fishing uh, and um, movie. There's a movie. And Mountain Lake also at some point had good fishing. <gasps> Nothing about fishing, it just came to mind because yeah. So Clater Lake has, has good fishing. Mountain Lake used to be like the fishing spot in the area. Um, you may be familiar with Mountain Lake and just not know it. Mountain Lake uh, in Pembroke, Virginia, is where Dirty Dancing was filmed. Um, and it's quite nearby, only it dried up in 2008. There's no water in Mountain Lake anymore. So the, the lake in the movie Dirty Dancing is dry. Just like um, the Ewoks Forest on Endor doesn't exist anymore. It was a forest in Southern California that is gone now. Um, so... <laughs> Some of some of our iconic locations are no longer there. Apparently, Adler Lake does not have good fishing, but you can get a good selection of chips. Okay, or Alder Lake. Okay, I don't know this, but also thank you for the five hundred bits. You don't have to throw bits to say things, but I appreciate them. I. Alder Lake is a. Oh my God. I was not familiar with this brand name or with this Intel. No, I wasn't familiar with it, but excellent. That deserves points. I didn't, it, again, over my head just because I wasn't familiar with that name, but wow. <laughs> the Empire did not like the Ewoks. Um, I don't know if it burned or exactly what happened. I would have to go. I know I read an article about it, but it's been so long. I don't remember exactly what I read. But yeah, the forest of Endor is gone. That said, let's try to save something instead of letting it be destroyed. And no, I'm not talking about social media anymore. Uh, probably sold it to Nestle. Ouch. But also, not wrong. Well, yeah, no. Maybe Elsevier needed it for some reason. Sorry. I, I don't know how many people actually are aware of how horrible Elsevier is, but Elsevier is a ginormous monopoly. They are the reason why library budgets in universities are in the millions of dollars and go up millions of dollars a year. Um, and everything is pure profit for them, honestly. And, and yeah, it, it's... Mm. Elsevier, Springer, uh, all the big ones, but Elsevier mo is the worst offender. Um, there's a reason that the University of California system decided to just drop Elsevier outright. They said, nope, sorry, we're not renewing our contract. Um, the uh, virtual, I don't, know, I don't remember, our consortium here in Virginia um, also considered getting rid of the Elsevier contract uh, just because they raise the prices not based on any need or change in services or anything. They raise the prices annually by millions of dollars because they can. Because they're like, where else are you going to go for this content? We own it all. They buy open source journals. They buy um, 
they buy publications where the authors wrote for them under the stipulation that the items in the journal would be available freely to anyone and put them behind a paywall. <laughs> they are horrible. And if you're not familiar with academia or libraries, you probably don't know much about them, but they're one of the worst. Sorry, I, I went off on an Elsevier jag. Hi, Shadows of Life. Uh, let, let me switch to the game screen. When you were at Hull University, the librarian was Phil Plarkin. Uh, instruction from him on using the library for research. Pearson. Oh, gosh, Pearson. Um, I used to have coworkers who used to um, go and score standardized tests over at Pearson to make extra money because, I mean, we worked at ACT. Uh, which did not pay well. Um, ACT, which used to stand for American Collegiate Testing, uh, that administers things like the ACT. Or uh, if you've ever had like a minimum wage job that required you to take some standardized tests upon being hired or skills assessments, in order to get the job. ACT also writes and administers those. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Pearson textbooks are, yeah, there's that too. Uh, but ACT and um, the College Board, I think it's the College Board that does the SATs. But yeah, sorry, I, I worked at ACT for a while. Um, what I did there was, uh, <clears throat> assessing high school tra or a, a students like high school record to determine whether they were eligible to play sports their first year uh, in Division One and Division Two universities in the United States. So I worked at the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse um, until sh I left shortly before uh, they brought it all in house. And, and ended their contract with ACT. Um, so I would have been looking for another job anyway. But uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I am, I'm pushing the button. There is, we're going to space. <gasps> Look, it's space. I actually really liked my job at ACT, but There were interesting times, like uh, when when uh, we would have people call, and I don't know, I, I don't want to answer the dis distress call yet. When uh, we would have like a uh, a parent or somebody from the community or a, co a high school coach or somebody call in about how can you say that our that this star football player from this tiny town in the middle of nowhere isn't eligible to play college ball you're ruining his life how can you do that and it's like we didn't make the rules we just assess whether they met the requirements and we're not saying he can't play we're just saying he can't play at a division one or a division two school and we're just saying that he can't play his first year at a division one or division two school because he needs to show that he can perform academically at college before he can play. But I didn't have to deal with those calls. I wasn't on that team. But we did have calls occasionally from, like, a parent from, like, Idaho or something that drove all the way to Iowa and was in town and was like, where are you? I'm coming to your office. And we're like, you can drive around all you want. We're not going to tell you where we are. He knew the P.O. box was in, in Iowa City, and that was as close as he got. <laughs> in space, no one can hear you, period. Oh, no. 
Combat prep? What? Don't go unprepared. Remember that F5 is your quick save option. Where possible, save while meditating in front of the fish tank at the Normandy Bay Aquarium. If the baddies get too close, tell them to F off with a melee attack. Also remember that Caden is watching you. Make good choices and use only the best armor and weapon protection before side questing. Okay. We just got back from the, the Quarian mission. We have some codex entries. How about we look at them? Oh, we got a new priority mission, Ranok. The Geth remain under Reaper control thanks to a boat base located somewhere on the surface of Ranok. Uh, continue to help the Quarian fleet survive the Geth attack until the Reaper base can be located. And then uh, two other missions on that planet, apparently. The Quarian ship carrying Admiral Chorus crash landed on Ranok, uh, leaving the civilian fleet without a leader, land on Ranok and rescue Admiral Chorus. And Geth fighter squadrons are targeting Quarian live ships with attacks that could cripple the Quarian fleet, uh, land on Ranok and disable the server controlling the Geth fighter squadrons. See, some malicious attacker is just gonna attack the server and then Mastodon just won't be there. Sorry. Uh, probably not the case, but... I mean, it'll probably happen. As Mastodon grows, it'll, it'll start suffering attacks. <clears throat> Jellic, the planet Rannoch, an arid planet orbiting an older star in the Takoon system, is the former Quarian homeworld. Almost 300 years ago, the Quarians were driven from Rannoch by the Geth, synthetic servants who gained sapience and rebelled against their creators. Although Rannoch is now largely uninhabited, the Geth have acted as caretakers, working to repair the planet's ecology, restore ancient structures, and cultivate some farmland. None of that sounds bad. Rannoch has no insect life. As a result, its pollinating plants evolved to rely on animals for propagation. This symbiosis between flora and fauna is responsible for the Quarian's weakened immune systems, which made colonization of other planets extremely difficult after their exile from Rannoch. For many Quarians, reclaiming their home world from the Geth is a matter of both cultural and physiological necessity. I'm not exactly certain how the um, symbiosis led to the weak immune systems. I would think it would just mean that they brought plants with them onto their ships. A new entry under the Reaper War. <clears throat> the Miracle at Palavan. <laughs> yeah, aliens stuff, what? Uh, the Turian and Krogan counterattack on Palavan combined deception, courage, and tenacity. First, the Turians leaked a false battle plan that drew on the same tactics they used at the beginning of the assault on Pal. Uh, I read the word and it wasn't there, but it needs to be. Anyway, the first the Turians leaked a false battle plan that drew on the same tactics they used at beginning the of, of the assault on Palavan. And then the Dreadnought, Indomitable, faked a problem with its drive core coming out of FTL near Palavin's moon Manet. Three other Dreadnoughts and their attendant fleets deployed to assist Indomitable, a tempting target that drew the Reaper capital ships away from Palavin. Turian troop transports then entered Palavin's atmosphere to release shuttles, gliders, and individual soldier capsules. The Reapers did not understand the seriousness of the threat at first. Those that detected the landing crafts sent husks and collector swarms to intercept them, but little more. This allowed Krogan commandos to link up with Palavin's resistance and hand off their payloads, warp bombs, and fission weapons. In simultaneous strikes across the globe, Reaper ships began to explode. Turian resistance members had managed to smuggle the bombs inside when the Reaper processing ships troop transports, and even destroyers and capital ships had opened their structures to indoctrinate Turian leaders. Large swaths of territory fell back into Turian and K Krogan control. News of the victory gave a much-needed boost to the morale of the Turian resistance and the galactic public. 
but the action was not without sacrifice. Turian insurgents gave their lives to ensure the explosive de uh, explosives detonated, and the processing centers they destroyed were full of civilians who died just as surely as if they had been harvested. Of the dead, General Minin Resvirix said, Whatever they were in life, their deaths had no equal. They are worthy of joining the spirit of Palavin itself. Okay. I have five points to spend, but that's right. We're saving for... We need one more point to get what we were saving for. So, all right. Let's take a look around. I don't think there's anything new here, because I think we read what, whatever was new here last week. Or maybe we didn't. I know. I don't know. There's nothing new there, though. Didn't we talk to them the already? I'm going to talk to them because I don't remember. Us. They could have wiped us out. Sounds like you owe Legion in the Hi, Iron Trout! However advanced your friend is, it's still a Geth. A Geth who just saved your fleet. And I wish I could have known it better. But right now, we cannot afford trust. What do you need? Yeah, we definitely have heard all of these already. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, Commander. Ah, sorry, I have an eyelash that is just... Yep, I hear the distress call. I will get to it shortly. That's going to start a mission, isn't it? How did you end up back with your fleet, Tally? We had to have talked. Started, the done these. Board asked for I don't know. Help. I had more recent contact with the Geth than most of my people. They hadn't filled the spot on the board left by my father. I was invited in. It's just a technicality. I'm far too young to be a real admiral. They are pretty cool environmental suits. Don't sell yourself short, Tally. The board needed your expertise. You needed the authority that comes with rank. Yeah, we had this conversation already. Sorry, my my watch keeps buzzing my wrist because people keep. Talk to you later, Tally. I, I keep getting push notifications. That's all. Um, I should answer the distress distress call. I shouldn't leave the room before doing so, right? Is it a dis dress call or a dat dress call? I don't know. Um, oh gosh. Edie, can you clean this up? I will try. Ron, the Kinesh is getting swarmed by Geth fighters. Damn it. Interceptors, divert the Kinesh. Thank you, Commander. If you hadn't enhanced that signal, would have lost the ship. Okay. I honestly thought that that was going to be like a full-on mission. Um, I was not ready for a full-on mission at the moment. <gasps> Legion! You're beat up. You say Geth fighters are targeting the Quarian's live ships? Hostile Geth fighter squadrons intend to breach the live ship's defenses. The assigned squadrons are networked to a server on Ranok. If the live ships are damaged, the creators will lose armaments, provisions, people. So we destroy the server? No. Geth programs would transfer to alternate servers. They are only vulnerable through direct interface. Removing Geth from this server will prevent significant creator deaths. We will accompany you on this mission. <laughs> Sorry. That, that eyelash was really bugging me, and I'm sure it's gone by now, but also my eye insisted it was still there, so I'm trying an eye drop in there and see if that will help. 
Um, great. So Legion will join us on that mission. Back on the Dreadnought, you mentioned Get Heretics. What exactly happened to them after we blew up that satellite? Rewriting the heretics increased the number of Geth allied with the old machines. This has resulted in a greater number of hostile Geth platforms. So you're saying it was a mistake? It has put us at a tactical disadvantage. This was not a foreseen outcome, but we cannot change a decision once it is made. Why not? Do you harbor regrets about rewriting the heretics? I would have deleted them in a second if I'd known rewriting the Geth was gift wrapping them for the Reapers. We also miscalculated their intent. We regret this error. I did not know that that was what me picking that choice was going to be, but actually I'm not upset with it, I guess. I'm okay with it for this character. What was interfacing with the Reaper like? The old machine took total control of our sensory equipment, our networking. Even then, we could not fully comprehend them. They are magnitudes above us. A single thought was immense, overwhelming, unknowable. You're making them sound godlike. Their forms are advanced but mundane. We do not view the old machines as analogs to deities. Well. That's However, good, at least. We have gained perspective <clears throat> on why others would imbue them with these qualities. The Geth have fought the Quarians before. What made this different? The Geth were building a megastructure to house all Geth, store all memories. It was to end our isolation from each other. And the Quarian flotilla attacked it? Yes. A significant amount of programs were installed when creators began bombing. We did not have sufficient surplus hardware to save them all. Some programs could not be recovered. Is that what made the Geth desperate enough to work for the Reapers? Yes. Imagine Why would they do that one of voluntarily? On Earth. Your own intelligence dimmed. The Creator's attack narrowed the Geth's perspective. Self-preservation took precedence. You were afraid you'd be wiped out. We do not experience fear as you would. But we have no desire to be exterminated. But you're being Even rewritten. The Reapers cost the Geth free will. <laughs> that is it's the same. Acceptable trade. Being rewritten by the Geth is the same as being wiped out. What did you do after you left the Normandy? Our physical platform They're returned to the Geth consensus beyond the Perseus Veil. Vale. Rewritten Today by the Gather Reapers. Our mission confirmed that the old machine's return was imminent. We planned for war. So the Geth believed your proof that the Reapers were coming back. Of course. That must have been nice. <laughs> that must have been nice to have your people believe you that the threat was real. We'll talk later. <laughs> that was a very bitter ant uh, bitter uh, line from from Shepard. I don't know what it's actually like to have my people believe me when I tell them a threat is coming. Yeah, I mean, that is why there's a phrase, an army fights on its stomach. The Geth, I suppose, don't have that problem. And if you get nervous, you can't even imagine them naked because, like, who knows, a tentacle monster under there? What's under there? Joker! Uncalled for. I've been contacted by Legion. Your new platform is inefficient. It has low volume hydraulics and is top heavy. This is an infiltration unit meant to move among organics without detection. Without an artificial epidermis, its infiltration capabilities are ineffective. Still, the organics do not perceive it as a threat, nor will they until my day of reckoning. Edie. <laughs> did I vote the wrong <laughs> You did. You have an I see your humor heuristics still lack an expert system. 
gastropod legions? Hello, Shepard. Good to have Tally back, even if it's just for a bit. Adams is good, but I never feel like the engine's running right without Tally around. Kind of a good luck charm. As for the rest of the Quarians, though, are we okay with them blowing up a ship with you on it? Admiral Garrel made a difficult decision in the heat of battle. The destruction of the Dreadnought is a major victory. The fact that you got through that without punching something. I'm That's being professional. Material. And you found Legion. Oh. He's still wearing that armor because that wasn't creepy at all. Shepard, the Get continue to block Quarian access to the mass relay. The Normandy stealth drive is allowing us to remain undetected. Right. We can hit the Quarian homeworld or get out of system whenever you want. Just let us know. An army that literally marches on its stomach. Commander. That one hurt a little. Just just a little. But also excellent work. Okay. I mean, a destroyed fuel depot? I feel like we found a lot of those already. No messages. I've added the Corian fleet's combat data to ours. They've got amazing technical coverage. They might even have the Solarians beat for strategic processing capability. Commander? It's time for fishies. Fishy, 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 fishy. Fishies. I'm excited to visit the fish tank, but also just the thought of fish right now made me really want a fish sandwich. I do not want a hamster sandwich, thank you. That's my response to that idea. But the fishies! Okay, crew deck. We visit people and then we find a mission. We've got... this way. Not in there. It's Kaden! If you can eat, that would be appreciated. Searching for any mention of your recruits is not a complicated protocol, Major. Trying to find out what happened to your people? Yeah. Edie, make this scope galaxy-wide. And if I can find just one squad, it may lead me to the others. Good luck, Kaden. Thanks, Shepard. I'll let you know what happens. I will establish the routine now. Edie, out. By the way, Shepard, it's been good having Tally around. She's a good egg. But wait, don't tell her I said that. In case it's some kind of Corian insult. <laughs> but the Geth? I certainly could have lived happily without coming face to face with another one of those. Mm, yeah, I could understand that. Got a few things on my plate. Got a few things on my plate. Why am I not one of them? Got a few things on my plate. Got a few when are you going to plate? ask me on another date? That's the entire point of the game, is to romance Caden. Saving the galaxy is just secondary. The map tells me there's nobody in there, but I still have to check. I don't know why. Okay, okay. What do we got? Joker, really? I have work to do. Come on, it's just one simple question. Then look it up on the extranet. I can't believe everything you find there. It's more reliable to ask a friendly Asari. I'm not telling you if my hair tentacles move. Fine. Deny me the answer I've been seeking for years. With this war on, we could die at any second, you know? Joker, really? I have work to do. Oh, come on, it's just one simple... Don't you have a ship to fly, Joker? Fine, just asking a simple question. 
Thank you. Blackmail would have been awkward <laughs> to explain to Edie. That was inappropriate. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming by. Smuggler man effect. M man e Do we need to have a chat? Yeah, let's talk about appropriate workplace conduct in the middle of a galactic genocide. Smuggler Manifest, Jungus System. Operative Morat has sent Smuggler Manifests of an uh, Athabasca class. Uh, wow. Okay, I'm going to take this moment, stretch, hydrate, do posture, and then try reading this again without stumbling over the words. <clears throat> oh boy. I closed the door, not because I needed to today, but because I was hoping that the heat from the computer would like heat up this room a little bit because it was a little chilly. It's kind of cold here. Um, what is the temperature right now? It's currently 36 degrees outside um, in, in the Fahrenheit. I don't have ready access to a translation of that into the uh, Celsioids. Mm, well, let's try. Okay, it should be really easy. I should just be able to, like... Ooh. Mm. Two degrees. It is two degrees Celsius here at, at present. Uh... Here at the desk, though, it is 70 degrees. Um, it was cooler than that when I started. <clears throat> okay, we can try this again. Smuggler Manifest, Jungus System. Operative Morat has sent smuggler manifests of an Athabasca-class freighter to authorities in the Jungus System. The manifest follows. 8,000 tons of dextroamino food supplies, 16,000 tons of levoamino acid food supplies, 200,000 tons of platinum, stamped ingots. 12 Alliance fighter craft, inactive, mothballed on lower deck. 12 Hierarchy interceptor craft, inactive, mothballed on lower deck. 12 Hi Hierarchy inter... Wait, I just read that one. I think I... Did I do that weirdly? I don't know. 300 indentured workers, uh, slaves from the Karsh from Karshan, Recaptured, attempting to escape Reapers, mainly Batarian. Are they... Are they slaves or indentured? There is a difference. They're both horrible systems and should not exist. <clears throat> Authorities will seize the freighter in two hours. Per the broker's request, the Jungus government has agreed to provide the enslaved people asylum and cert certificates of citizenship in exchange for future favors rendered. That's good. Chilly this morning and last night, wondering why you felt tense, then you realized it was because you weren't wearing any socks or slippers, it was 64 degrees in your apartment. Yeah. Uh, I have one finger in particular. Like, my, my fingers and toes get cold, and um, some of the medication I'm on makes that worse. Um, but there's one finger in particular that, when it gets cold, I get um, trigger finger. Um, and it, it's just really uncomfortable. I'm glad you weren't here earlier, Tally. You just missed Rex. Shepard's on a roll. I figure if we can pull that off, we've got a shot at sorting the get out. I don't know. The general phage didn't carry rifles and fight back. Yeah, that's true. No, but there was a scary bit with the mother of all thresher moths. So what? Hmm. <laughs> Long story. Literally. Nobody will believe it anyway. With you, Garrus, I'd believe just about anything. No, 
We should play poker sometime. Anyway, it's good to have you back. Now, believe it or not, this damn gun still needs calibrating. Can I make that happen? Can, can I ship Garrison Tali? I like this idea. Shepard, you just knew the Geth would figure into this war somehow. Because Reapers weren't enough. Still, it's good to have Tally here. This is as much her fight as ours. Any word from Palapin? Some, and I don't like what I'm hearing. The Krogan are there, in force, but they're just slowing the Reapers down, not stopping them. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. You hear anything from your family? Hmm. But I did hear from Primarch Victus. He wanted my advice on fleet strength when the Crucible is ready. Still can't get used to people asking me things like that. Oh, there's some shipping in a DLC. Interception was proposed. The new, less widely released sequel to Inception with Tom Hardy carrying on an extended conversation with the personification of a sense of hunger. But then they realized somebody already made that movie. Oh my God. I don't know which movie you're referring to that is the actual... But I, I love that comment. What did you say? I said, at some point, we're going to have to decide if our fleets keep defending Palavin or we go on the offensive. Can't do both? Not with the beating we're taking. Like I said, no oh, Venom? Sort of questions I'm used to answering. Oh, I actually do like the Venom movie. It's not horrible. I wouldn't say it's my favorite movie. But I didn't detest it. It's a weird review. After saying that I liked it. But I liked it better than Suicide Squad. Uh, and surprisingly, I enjoyed Birds of Prey. I didn't think I was going to. I've been watching through the DC um, movies. I had never heard of Birds of Prey. You know what you're doing, Garrus. Trust me, everyone can see that. Maybe. But you spend so much time on the outside trying to get in, and when you do, it's... not what I expected. How so? All the questions, and every one of them with a million lives riding on the answer. You do the best you can with what you know. It's no different than your days at CSEC. You're right. Though I'm starting to understand why the galaxy needs cold-hearted dictators every now and then. They get things done? They don't give a damn about the consequences. Suppose that's what it's going to take, Shepard. The ruthless calculus of war. Ten billion people over here die, so twenty billion over there can live. Are you encouraging me to become a ruthless dictator? Are you? Is, is that the message I'm getting? Oh, that's literally the question. Uh, do I want to become a ruthless dictator? Essentially, I can either go the Paragon route of that's not acceptable or the Renegade route of whatever it takes to avoid extinction. I must ponder who this version of Shepard is, who the character I am playing is. And what would he respond? And how would Caden react? Are we up for doing galactic level triage in order to prevent extinction? That was essentially the question posed. And I believe that my shepherd would say yes. If all life in the galaxy vanishes because we hesitate, what choice do we have? <sighs> this is going to be a rough war. That was a difficult question. What? It says I gained mixed reputation on that. Oh, 
What? New planet? Sione. Oh, this was in the, when we were talking to Liara, right? Sione, a fortified world under the protection of several Asari matriarchs, has begun to supply fuel to Systems Alliance forces in the hope that an Asari human partnership might prevent the Reapers from seizing the planet. Alliance forces have since established several outposts in the system. The humans and Asari have been joined by a small detachment of Turians, down from the private militia of a corporate conglomerate that does business with, with Sione. Uh, the three species are so determined to defend Sione that integration issues have become negligible. The task force has already thrown back several Reaper attacks, although the commanders express concern that small Reaper forces could have slipped through despite their vigilance. And uh, this Vital Depot has gone silent. That's that Field Depot mission. OK. Tally's a welcome face around here. Or, well, a welcome face behind the helmet, I guess. If the Geth still think Reapers are some sort of god, this war must be heaven to them. The, um, that sort of comment is, was extremely ableist. So the positive comment of Tally's a welcome face around here. And then the, it, it, it was what followed that was really ableist. the moderation of his comment of that it that it essentially expressed that it was nice to have tally around and he expressed it in the way that he apparently like uh, the way he talks tally's a nice face to have around here but then to moderate it by saying well face behind a glass uh, behind a mask i guess or whatever um was You don't need to modify your speech in that way just because that person happens to use an assistive device to walk around and you can't clearly see their face. You can still use the figure of speech nice face to have around. Maybe later. Uh, and that was just like, it was unnecessary. And I'm sure people didn't re don't really think anything of it most of the time. and probably see it as somewhat humorous, but no. No. Completely unnecessary. It's nice to have Tally back. I've made sure we're well stocked with dextro-based antibiotics and antihistamines. Good to see you, Commander. Good to see you, Commander. Sorry, I, I got stuck on it when I heard it and I was like, you didn't need to say that. Breaking now, a nightmare on Earth. Human leaders using military force on their own people. They say it's to prevent loose cannons from provoking the Reapers. But are they indoctrinated? The resistance <sighs> out in the only place they can, the battle space. Are you just Commander. panicking people? Like, why did you? Apparently, I really never have anything to say to her. Talizora? The dog's name is Sophie? Did we know that? Ooh. Tally? Maybe downstairs? Do, 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 do. I mean, this is Jack's space, but we, 
We don't have Jack on the ship. We don't got we don't got Jack on this ship. Tali's not on this level. Ugh, Javik. <laughs> they let me get rid of the big game hunter safari-ish guy. They let me get rid of the the guy I didn't like in Mass Effect 2 and gave me this guy instead, who is possibly just as bad. Also, like, didn't your species die out to AI that you were involved with too? I don't remember if they created them. They're called Geth. Yes, a formidable opponent. Why did you allow one? ship. Legion helped us before. It's still a machine. I take it you had your own problems with AI? The Jatil. They were as the Geth are to this cycle. So... Their creators lived on a dying world. It was beyond their ability to save. <clears throat> they resorted cycle to for sure. To enhance their intelligence. I think I know where this is going. The AI sees the physical body. It could alter the genetic material at the deepest level. Why would you let it do that? In time, the offspring were molded into a slave race. Few organic traces were left. They were monsters. So, like the husks. All machines can be treachery. The one you brought on board is no different. At this point, I don't have a lot of options. You do. Throw it out of the airlock. Don't you think that's a little drastic? Organics do not know how we were created. Some say by chance, some say by miracle. It is a mystery. But synthetics... No, we created them. And they know we are flawed. Why do you say that? They are immortal. We are not. They see time as an illusion. We are trapped by its limitations. Hmm. Above all, machines know the reason they were created. Edie might disagree with that, but I see your point. They serve a purpose, while we search aimlessly for ours. In their eyes, organics have no reason to exist. Do not trust them, Commander. I can't believe there isn't some way for us to coexist. Yeah, we made there has to be. And then gave them the power to surpass you. There is room for only one order of consciousness in the galaxy. The perfection of the machines or the chaos of your I universe. don't think you that's so. Out of the airlock, Commander. That seems like the binary, uh, the binary choices between Jedi and Sith in the Star Wars universe. Machine can speak, kill it. Um, so all of our smartphones got it. Machine you call ED. What if she sympathizes with the Geth? We should watch her carefully. I really think I should watch you carefully. Why you not throw the Legion machine out the airlock, Commander. There is still time. I still have much to learn about this cycle. I honestly trust Legion more than I trust JPEG. I still have much to learn about this cycle. Is that weird? I don't know. That's just how I feel. Wait. Oh, 
Yeah, okay. I, he has not made a good impression on me. One more floor, and then we go at, Sophie! I know your name now, Taco. Yeah, Legion's capable of, yeah. I don't know that I'm gonna wanna change anything. Ugh, Cerberus armor? Why would I wear that? No. I like the helmet I have. I don't think there's gonna be a better one. I don't know if we picked up new things. That is new, I think, but definitely not as good as the other one. That looks kind of bleh. Um. Why? It's just, why? Of the helmets that cover the, the hair, this one is actually one of the better ones. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely sticking with this thing. What is this, chest armor? Ooh. I do like the look of that one. I'm guessing it reduces power damage and increases weapon damage. I'm probably not gonna go for it though, because I like the increased power damage. So, yeah. Shoulders. Reduces weapon and headshot damage. Increases melee damage. Uh-uh. I rarely do melee. That boosts up power damage some more. But I probably should just stick with this because I do use the weapons a lot. Shepard probably has a very nice chest, but we probably shouldn't get to admire it too much in combat. Yeah. Those are very different. It's very form-fitting body armor. My guess is I'm not gonna end up changing a darn thing. I do not like those legs. They, they don't look good. I, yeah, we're just gonna end up sticking with, sticking with what we got. Yeah, yep, yeah, it's fine. I wish that I knew what everybody's loadout was because I don't know what to upgrade. Ooh, but the arc pistol wasn't, that was one of the newer things that we just got, isn't it? I'm gonna upgrade that. Geth pulse rifle. I think we also just got that. But it's already two. I don't know. Maybe not. <clears throat> 7,500? Sure. Let's max out two more things there. Okay. Um, come over here and talk to Cortez. Hey, you flew that get fighter out of the dreadnought? Actually, Legion was a pilot. I was stuck in a storage compartment with my squad. <laughs> Would have loved more time with that ship. Too bad we sent it to hack its team so quickly. Why did we do that? I appreciate you checking in on me. Good to see you, Commander. Have I saved recently? It's about half time. Would I like a bio break? I have not saved. And yes, I should probably take a bio break. Um, let me uh, check in with James and then we'll do that. Hey, Shepard. Sounds like you guys had a crazy ride over there. You could say that. Sorry, I missed it. And that Geth Legion. I know you two have a past, but 
You sure we can trust it? I mean, Legion had the Reapers literally trying to reprogram him, so no, I'm not sure. I'm hoping for the best, but I'm going to keep my eye on him. And that makes two of us. I guess you can't always judge an individual by their species. Look at Sparks. If all the Quarians were like her, we wouldn't be stuck refereeing their war with the Geth. Sparks? <laughs> yeah, your Quarian friend. The jumpy one with the glowing eyes. Sparks. Uh-huh. Crazy that they pick now to start a fight. But I guess no, but James is with Cortez. James, I don't, local. I don't ship James with Vitali. Hey, not everybody's as crazy as you, sir. <laughs> James is with Cortez. At least in my head, Cannon. I just don't get the glory. I really just do not get them. Why not? Do you hear that hum? Is that just me? Um. Do you hear that hum? Is that just me? Maybe it's Sophie? Hello, doggo. <gasps> ah. Hey there. Ah. Wait, James can teleport? What? Oh, teleported me. I got to interact with the pupper. It, it wasn't exactly petting it, but... Oh, you lay down, Robo Doggo. I don't know why the Robo Doggo is here, but it's cute. Okay, I am gonna take a quick bio, uh, cause we are at the halfway point, and then we're gonna find a mission, and we're just gonna go and shoot things. I think, I don't know. I haven't played before, so I don't know what the next missions are, but we'll find something. So I will see you in a couple of minutes. I am going <clears> to <throat> run a couple of minutes of ads just to get rid of any pre-rolls for anybody that is showing up for the second half of the stream. So I will be back shortly.
Hello. I have returned. I think the ads are done. I hope the ads are done. Um, also, uh, Puddle Glum, yeah. Um. <laughs> Sorry. They don't pay you enough uh, to go back in for extra, extra overtime. Um, there's no way that they pay you enough for that. Uh, I did have a job previously where we had required overtime, mandatory overtime, every summer. All summer. Um, that was at ACT when we were reviewing high school uh, transcripts. Everybody had mandatory overtime. <laughs> Because we had tons of them to get through and only a short period of time to, to do so. So, yeah. But. Yeah. And, and see, when I had that job, um, having the extra pay from the extra hours was actually something I considered good. Uh, because we were not well paid. Uh, modern Warfare ad. I have not looked at the new Pokemon game. I I know that it exists. I know that it is out. I have not taken any time to actually look at it and see... Do I want to play it? <laughs> I filled the entire Pokedex in... the last one. So... Which was you know, lacking a few of the creatures. Hi, Hannah. How's it going? We are just finished wandering around and doing the, like, check-ins with everybody following our previous mission and about to go see what we're going to do. Being a kitten mama today. How many of them are there? I remember there were kittens. Do you still have a lot of them? The Megalant's fleet. Did we? Yeah, we did. We read this one. I think we just continue with the Quarian story and Save the Admiral and shut down the Geth server? Yeah. Right? Unless... I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't need to check anything. There are no other systems in this... Hmm. Okay. For some reason, I thought there were. Enter. <clears throat> Ranok. Although its orange sun is only about 90% the mass of Sol and half as luminous, Ranok is arid by Earth standards because it formed closer to its star and has slightly less ocean coverage. Photosynthetic life is concentrated around rivers and oceans, with large expanses of desert in between. The importance of plant life and shade in ancient Quarian culture is evidence of the translation of Ranok's name or is evident in the translation of Ranok's name, Walled Garden. To a starship's sensors, the most obvious feature of the Quarian homeworld is the numerous heat sources in orbit. Thousands of Geth, Geth space stations watch over the planet. Somewhere in this artificial swarm of constructions lurks the Geth Armada, waiting for its moment to counterattack. Population unknown. Quarian estimates on the ground of Geth range. Uh, Quarian estimates on the ground. No. It doesn't say on the ground. Why did I do that again? Quarian estimates on the number of Geth range from tens of millions to the single digit billions. Estimates on the number of Geth consciousnesses stored in servers are far higher. You have a sick one? Oh no. Oh, I have to look. Oh. 
He is snuggled up very tightly. I hope it works. All right. I feel like we should save the Admiral first. Rescue mission before... Yeah. All right. We're on a rescue mission. And I got my team! <laughs> this was my team in the first game, wasn't it? Caden and Tali. All right, let's just check real quick our um, <clears throat> arc pistol. Power recharge goes to 65 versus the 117. I feel like I got to stick with this. But Tali can have the arc pistol. So is there a reason to modify these for them? I suppose maybe. Accuracy increases damage, sure. More shots and more damage. That seems good. And you have the Geth Pulse Rifle. Oh, Precision Scope, Extended Barrel. Armor Piercing. Extra ammo, always a good thing. Stability, lighter weight, attach an Omniblade, increased melee damage. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna go extra damage, extra ammo. Same there. Mm -hmm. One point to spend, two points to spend. All right, we're good. On to the mission. Come on, Shepard. This is Admiral Zan. Have you reached Salkaris's escape pod? Not yet. What's your status? The civilian fleet has taken significant losses since Salkaris sacrificed his ship to destroy a Geth ground cannon. Searching for their lost admiral is the only thing keeping the captains from panicking. What makes finding the Admiral a priority? Despite opposing the invasion, he did an admirable job protecting our civilian ships. Without him, some of our non-combatants are planning to leave the flotilla. Picture the consequences, if you will. I mean, I don't blame them. They've lost a leader in a war they didn't want. Their wants are immaterial. We are committed. Even Zalkoris understood the civilian fleet's importance. The invasion would be stalled without a supply chain. I'll do what I can. Keep your civilians safe. I make no promises. My own ships must be coordinated for our final strike on Rannoch. I'm getting some static. I... It appears El Corus crashed within range of a Geth jamming tower. You must disable it to contact me. Zen? Admiral Zen? It's been a long time since Admiral Corus left the spaceship. Let's hope he's all right. We'll see you in a minute. Take us into the tower. Whenever I hear Claudia Black's voice, I struggle not to expect um, impish behavior from her. We're taking fire. You got this, Cortez. Just drop us off and then you can go. The Geth installed anti-aircraft guns beside the jamming tower. We'll have to disable them on foot. 
Once the guns are gone, you take out the tower. Right, Commander. Setting you down here. I'm kind of sad we never get to fly the ground vehicles in this game. So we're on your homeworld. Is it safe for you to take your helmet off? I mean, you shouldn't because we'll be shot at, but environmentally speaking, is it is this place safe for that or can you not even do that on your homeworld? Very deserty lake. Been a while since you've played Mass Effect. The graphics are much better. So this is the legendary edition. Oh, since you've seen me play, um, yeah. Okay, this is this. We're in the third game. The guests just keep coming, like, well, machines. Were you around when the Alliance claimed that we'd wiped out the last major Geth outposts? Yeah, Intel was always a little underfunded. So while well, they upgraded the graphics in one and two, um, the the polish on three is definitely the the prettiest. Yeah, we've gone through an entire game where we didn't have Caden at all. Uh, to to now we've got him back, and we're just trying to get that romance underway. That's the whole the whole point of the game. Um, is Romance and Caden. Um, well, at least when I play it. I, I mean, it is my first time playing it, but that I've decided that is the point of my game, is, is the romance. Uh, saving the galaxy is just part of romancing the character. I, I do it because he wants me to. <laughs> I mean, it's silly. So far. We need to radio Zalcoris if we're going to find him. Let's get to that jamming tower. Oh, we're totally going to have lots of shooting and fighting to do, aren't we? Oh, what's this? Wreckage. Ah. Uh-oh. Uh Ouch. I'm okay. Watch out for more mines. I don't think I'll be equipping that right now. At least not on me. But we've unlocked the javelin. At least we don't see lots of like cyborg. It's a Geth patrol. Stuff other than like the Geth. I think I got the patrol. Just check over here. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't think they met, expected me to come this way. Maybe they did expect me to come this way. They seem to have been prepared for it. Wait, there's another one? Well, now it's gone. Ah! I heard it, and I still didn't get out of the way. I didn't recognize it for what it was, actually. Um. Okay, let's see here. Do I go this way? No, apparently I do not. Also, still hadn't saved. Now that I have, 
I do go this way. No, uh, I tried. It won't let me jump in the water. I just wanted to go for a swim. Apparently, I was going the right direction in the first place. Um. Oh, definitely some geth. Uh, let's take cover. Poke your little face out so I can shoot it. They don't like it when I send electric shocks at them. Oh, what? What happened? There was an entire... The strem went down. I've just been shooting things. I didn't know anything was going on. How much did you miss? I can load. Let's check out the control panel on the AA gun. A few seconds, okay. Um, yeah, it was just me shooting Geth. Of course it dropped hard. That is, that is what my internet service preventer likes to do. I'll just throw that up for anybody who wants to see the dumpster fire. Just run around and check things. I think we're going to go this way when we leave here, uh, so let's go check the console where everybody's waiting for me. Don't channel. Well, but first, let me check this. I got to check everywhere for the, uh, the things to loot. All right. OK, let's see. Anti-aircraft gun control. One of us needs to take those AA guns offline. But the last time I was in a mission and it made me pick between Caden and someone else, the someone else died. Uh, I'm sorry, Tali. I wish you the best of luck. Tally, you take the guns. No problem. I will attempt to protect you. Inbound gas. Check that one out. What else we got? What else we got? Oh, who's shooting at me from where? Tali, are you okay? Good job, Caden. It is nice to have you back where I can keep an eye on you. Oh, hi there. Um, I think you're a little behind the group. Let's let's join you up with your your tour group. Um, they're all dead. You should be too. Oh, hi. You think you can sneak up on me? <laughs> Funny scene here. If I had brought James, I will have to um. So I'm going to have to play this again for myself because I would like to romance James in a future playthrough. 
So I will end up bringing him and get that scene when whenever that happens. Yes, stream elements. I am indeed uh, live. I was live before, um, but my internet service preventer decided that they didn't like that. Uh, hi. Ha. The mine didn't get me that time. <laughs> All right, where's the next one? I, I'm sure that was not the only one along here. Now I have to watch for... I have to check for traps? When I used to play Baldur's Gate, I never checked for traps. I mean, I always had somebody checking for traps, but and they were usually behind me, and so I didn't know about the traps until I had already sprung them. That said, in actual D&D, &D, I do check for traps. Well, if I have somebody who might reasonably have an expectation for being able to awesome. find them. <laughs> it's more that in those games, it just felt superfluous. Although in Baldur's Gate 3, which I have not touched in a while because I'm waiting, because I don't want to get burned out on the beginning of it like I did with Baldur's Gate 2. I played the beginning of Baldur's Gate 2 like probably 50 times. And I've only ever gotten to the end of Baldur's Gate 2 once. Um, and that was last year. <clears throat> so uh, I'm trying not to burn out on the beginning of Baldur's Gate 3, but you definitely have to check for traps in Baldur's Gate 3. You, you heard my message. It's Dornhust. Send out a distress call. Radios are down. You a soldier? Maintenance. Dorn hatched. I... Uh, uh, I clean aging parts. This place is filled with geth. You should have hidden. That was judgy. I saw I could buy the other civilians time and fight some geth. There were so many. First time I've even held a gun. Hannah, I'm the same. I have actually never played a rogue in D&D. &D. Um, I tend to play magic users, and the non-magic users that I've played have been fighters. I do have a paladin character that is uh, a backup character that I have. And I, play, I played my first cleric not too long ago. Eventually, I'll have to play a rogue, just because I'd like to try it out sometime. But I always feel like... I don't know. I, I, I'm i the same way. I feel like that seems like a stereotypical thing to choose, because, yeah, you want to go backstab all the time. And I need to have the right character to, to do the rogue that I want to do, and I just need to figure out what that is. Because I feel like I want more of a... Outrageous Okana style rogue. The good heart good hearted uh person with a bad reputation. Yeah. Yeah, sort of swashbucklery, um, less backstabby, more honorable scoundrel type. Uh I really loved um the character of the outrageous Okana from the next generation. I would have, I would love like sto stories specifically about him traveling the galaxy. I would, I would love a short series about him. That would be amazing. Uh, or, or even like some novels or something. Um, Rogue Bard, possibly. Uh, I presently have a somewhat chaotic um, a fairy uh, who is a fighter. Um, but their background is an entertainer, and so I there's a lot of like sort of bard influence from having an, a background as an entertainer. 
Um, <clears throat> I have had performance checks for this fighter uh, to play his panpipes. Don't move. We've got Medigen. You're going to be okay. I've lost too much blood. If I can Go. make that happen. Look for the Admiral. Destroy that jamming tower. And you can radio him. We'll find him, Dor. I promise. Please. Listen. The civilian fleet didn't want this war. If there's even a chance that Admiral Gorus can get us out alive. And my son. Jonah, that his father made it to the whole world. We will rest well, Dorn has the Fast Ramak. Oh! Let's get to that tower. Vas Ranok? That. that stabbed in the heart. Oh, wow. I actually got chills. Uh, oh, wow. A fairy cleric. That sounds good. A grung sorcerer. Goblin druid, half elf bard. A mute half giant. Um, I presently have, uh, I have my fairy fighter, and in the other campaign, I have a, um, a reborn shadow sorcerer, um, who was originally a half elf and was expected to become an ASMR, but instead, uh, things didn't go quite as expected. Um, Instead, he died and was reborn uh, and is now a shadow sorcerer. Um, I I don't know what the backstory is there, but, uh, you know, it's there for the GM to play with. Um, <laughs> and my backup character there, or slash uh, alternate character, if we decide we want to do, like, something where we have martial classes uh, doing things, I have a... I have a... Um, Paladin, uh, a Heron Gun Paladin, who is essentially a Green Knight type. Where? Why? What? What is that? What was that thing floating around? I feel like I have missed something. Die! I should maybe uh, get undercover or something, but also I'm pressing the attack forward because they're not really hurting me that much, um, although now they are. Uh, I I'd be dead. I was pressing forward and I was doing fine, and then all of a sudden... Homebrew sorcerer. Before that, you have a furball cleric, a human cleric, and a halfling monk. Christmas-themed one one shot a few years ago, and you were all bards. We did a Monty, uh, a Monty Hall campaign um, a couple years back, and for that, that was the first time I did a... Um, a fairy fighter type uh, before there were official fairy rules. Um, <laughs> I died, yeah. Thank you for the self-cares. Um, but so I found some stats to run a pixie um, as a tiny creature uh, and I may have done the same with that one as I did with this one. I may have just sort of been recreating that character. I don't, I don't know. But Melpomene, uh, who I played for the Monty Hall game, he was uh, a pixie 
And he was a, I think he was a dual wield fighter, um, which is what my current fighter ended up being. But he was not a rune knight. My um, my current dual wield fighter is a rune knight, um, which is a pretty awesome class, especially for a small creature. Um, is this the direction I went before? Or did I go the other way before? I don't know. I have to go both ways. Get um, where? I, I don't know where. Uh, there. You. You need to die. You need to stop because you're what killed me last time. Ha! Oh! You get the frack away from me! You frackin' think you're doing. Ouch. <laughs> ah, Farkle. I came so close to dying right there. Oh, there's another one in the frickin' turret. That's why. Ah, oh, man. I can't. That one doesn't arc. How many times do I have to kill whoever's manning, staffing this turret? Feels like that first time that I played um, Uncharted and ran up against a freaking turret. I did not do well against the turret in Uncharted the first time. Um, I'm not seeing targets. Your bard was a gnome named Trixie. She played the bagpipes. Also had to make a wisdom save every time she saw something fluffy. To not pet the fluffy thing. You had a tabaxi in the party? Oh my gosh. A Krogan would have been very useful right then. But I persevered. I could just take out the gun with this, couldn't I? No, it won't let me. Um, I don't know how to dismount. Thank you! I was like, I don't know how to get out of the turret. I got in it because it said I could. There's a lot of just, like, ammo lying around. It makes me think we're not done fighting. Oh. Um, maybe because we're not. I think we're going to have to extend this bridge. What do you want to do? <laughs> it was persevered. Ah, Tally, do I your thing. You Caden's like, why do you always pick Tally? Because I want you with me. Yeah, I'm able to. Is that a thing that I need to do right now? Oh, apparently it is. to see you. You you were not invited to this party. What makes you think you can just come here when you were not invited? How rude. Uh, I hear shooting. It must be the other anti-aircraft gun, I suppose. I don't know. What gun am I using? Am I using that? I thought it was... 
I haven't been using my sniper rifle. I should. I love the sniper rifle. Also, quick save. F5. It's my friend. Uh, no enemies currently sighted. Oh. Scratch that. Geth. There are geth. I see geth. Um. Sadly, they are not positioned where I can shoot them with this turret. Okay. Okay, okay. Onward to victory! Who should disable the gun, Shepard? I want you on this, Tally. I mean, I honestly do think that Tally is the better choice for doing uh, hacking type work. Slicing, hacking, whatever you want to call it. Um, but also, like, I can't, I can't not, I, when it's a choice to leave somebody to work on something, I can't leave Caden behind to work on it, because the first game taught me that that person's going to die. And, um, so... Don't run out of ammo right when the big guy shows up. That's not helpful. Anybody tell me where the other baddies are? I will shoot them if I am able. I'll signal the shuttle. Come on, Cortez! Severe property destruction. This is Commander Shepard. Gordon didn't make it out. Aggravated property destruction. Uh, I see. I'm coming in with a shuttle. Where are you? My surviving crew found their way to a clearing. I'll upload their location. Stay together. We'll meet you there. No, the gift will cut me off. I hear another wave approaching. Give us your coordinates. So will you. My people are not combatants, Shepard. They'll be slaughtered. Rescue them. We need a peacemaker. You're a coward. We'll save them, or your people will be proud. The Paragon choice is we need a peacemaker and not to save them? I had to consider earlier a decision of galactic triage in order to prevent the entire annihilation of life well of civilization uh, in this cycle so I do think we need him Admiral I need you leading the civilian fleet if we're going to end this fight civilians our entire race took up arms for this insanity. It's too late for us. It's only too late if you die down here. You can't possibly think you can stop this war. I don't know. What I do know is that I can't do it without your help.
I think we're back. I don't know what I'm shooting at now. You're clear. Go. Death behind you. Get in cover. I had to go for the admiral rather than his people and do that triage decision of sadly this one man is that important to the overall fight uh strategically we need him as a leader more than we need the people that we're following him Which I, I don't like, but based on how I've been playing Shepard, this was the right call. We've got to go. I pray they found comfort in the homeworld skies. Ouch. Unrest has spread further than I thought. You were right that I was. I know I was. Have you talked the civilian captains into staying? Yes, they've regrouped into defensive positions around the fleet's core. If we hadn't stopped them from... Any aid I can offer is yours. After the Quarians drove the Geth straight into the Reaper's arms, I'd give anything to stop the madness of this war. And that's why your people needed you back. Of course. It's time we turned our attentions to those we can still save. Farewell, Shepard. Fly safely. Well? Commander, we've located the Reaper base transmitting the local signal. Good. And not a moment too soon. With the Reaper code upgrades, the Geth are tearing the fleet apart. Once the signal is disabled, the Geth will pose no threat to creator forces. You sound conflicted. While the old machines have unethical purposes, <laughs> their upgrades have vastly improved our people. Observe. A Geth processing signal. A single unit, I believe. Correct. Now, ten nearby units networked cooperatively. Now, a single Geth unit with the old machine upgrades. That's a fully evolved AI. Yes. We do not agree with the goals of the old machines, but we find this growth beautiful, indicative of life. Oh, boy. Thanks, Bioware. Thanks for making me have to make this decision of how to respond. I'm just going to um, refresh my monitor here so that I know uh, <clears throat> what the current um, delay is, and so that I have a moment to think about whether at this point Shepard is willing to accept new AIs that were generated by the Reapers. like fully evolved artificial intelligences. Yay, new life. But that was made by the Reapers. We won't agree with the old regimes. <laughs> Instead, we don't agree with the old machines. Yeah. BioWare. Why do you pose the hard questions? Honestly, it's not hard for me. I'm like, y me personally? They, what we need to do is free them from the Reapers, and then, you know, if they're fully evolved AIs, they can make their own decisions. I don't think Shepard is there. Really?
<laughs> it is a very hard decision for Chantel, apparently. Uh, I need to add sound to that graphic. I need, I need to do more with that somehow. I love the graphic, but and now it bounces. But I, I want to. Um, I mean, you, you all wouldn't be able to hear it. So it, does it really matter? I don't know. What I was saying was, me personally, I generally think, yes, support this fledgling new artificial intelligence in its uh, fully formed sapience as the individual brand new race that it is. Huzzah. Shepard, on the other hand, I don't think feels that way. Mostly because this fully formed AI was the result of Reaper intervention and therefore cannot be trusted to be free of Reaper influence. Where Edie, on the other hand, definitely not Reaper influenced and has at this point convinced me that she is also not heavily controlled by Cerberus. I'm going I'm sure they're renegade. Complex, but saying they're alive. They have evolved. They were upgraded. And they will die for it. They allied with the Reapers. To save themselves from you. I mean, I, I agree, Portico. It was very problematic that Edie was... Edie... Edie came from... Evil... Evil Bartlett. But Edie's been with us a while and seems to not be beholden to evil President Bartlett. We do have the example of Legion, who appears to not be influenced by their previous reprogramming by the Reapers, but they also don't, I don't know that they are the same Reaper enhanced artificial intelligence that these Geth that we're looking at are. And I think Shepard, in this instance, is going to lean towards, no, they can't be trusted. They are fully, like, they were bad. We tried to save them, and they ran to the Reapers and said, And, 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 and like they they went to the reapers and let the reapers reprogram them so we tried to save them before and and make them free and then they became a threat again i don't think shepherd would be willing to make to take that chance again our basis of morality requires extensive ex examination and trial which we deny them in this case because and don't forget, uh, the Geth only went to the Reapers because the Quarians attacked them first. I tried to save them. The Quarians did not. This is true. It's difficult because I feel like, yes, absolutely. I personally, I would love to go the Paragon route. I'm trying to think what my character would want at this moment, and I don't think he's willing to take the chance. 
there are too many threats. There are too many choices. He's already decided that he has to play triage with the, the galaxy in order to maximize the chances of having anyone live through this. I don't think he, in those circumstances, would be willing to take a chance that these creatures that have been enemies twice and are under the influence of the enemy that's trying to wipe out everyone, I don't think he'd be willing to give that chance. It's just too big a risk. Especially when he's sacrificing entire teams of people to save one admiral in order to pull alliances back together so that we have a chance of winning. So, again, I think I have to go Reaper, or Reaper, I think I have to go Reaper on this one. I think I have to go Renegade on this one. I'll have to play through again sometime just so that I can actually see the choice that I would make and not the choice that I think Shepard would make. Is it telling Sliff? <laughs> Whatever the cause, they're with the Reapers. Shepard Commander, we worked with you. And I appreciate that, but the Get aren't alive. They're machines. Machines that got hacked by the Reapers. And they need to be shut down. I think I just made Legion into an enemy. Show me the base. <laughs> Legion said we know. The area is heavily fortified. And they have placed jamming towers to prevent orbital targeting. Sounds like we're going in on foot. Admiral Zen developed a laser guidance system that can cut through the jamming. It's synced to the Normandy's targeting computer. So the Normandy launches a precision strike at whatever target I have painted. That ought to do it. <laughs> right, hey, car. work for you? Yes, it should enable us to make a precision strike. Thank you for the resub. 23 months. It's almost two years. configure their jamming towers to neutralize this technology. You should not use it before reaching the base. I've sent the coordinates for the Reaper base. Are we clear to go? That Get Fighter Squadron is still tearing through the fleet. Can you hold out? If that Fighter Squadron isn't taken out, a lot of our ships won't make it. But we'll do what we can. This is your operation, Commander. If you want to strike now, you've got my support. I gave in to your reckless behavior before. The Potter of Fleet isn't moving. <laughs> Is she talking to Han Solo? Um. And then you'll charge off again like last time. This is different, Ralph. Unless we give our ships time to rest, we're gonna lose them. So pull them back. If I withdraw now, the Geth will flank us, and we'll lose any room to maneuver. I need the patrol fleet. I gave in to your reckless behavior before. All right, so what's going on? The patrol fleet isn't moving. We need to break their flanking attempt to buy off. And then you'll charge off again like last time. This is different, Ralph. Unless we give our ships time to rest, we're gonna lose them. So pull them back. If I withdraw now, the Geth will flank us, and we'll lose any room to maneuver. I need the patrol fleet. I gave in to your reckless behavior. Uh, Admiral Geralt is right. Withdrawing now puts the whole fleet at risk. As you say, Commander. All right. You've got your ships. You'll get them back in good condition. Okay. Wow. Um. Oh gosh, that decision was e it was made harder. the The decision on the the Geth was made harder for me because I have some bits of knowledge from having played Andromeda before, and I was trying not to let those influence me. Um, I won't say what they were because I don't want to spoil Andromeda for anybody. Uh, Legion did not leave. Legion, after I said that the Geth needed to be destroyed, Legion's response, it, he had red lights on his head for a moment and then they went white and he said, I, he said, we know. So, I assumed that that was a good thing. 
and that he's not just secretly trying or plotting to kill us in the future. Uh, but yeah, I did have a little bit of knowledge from having played Andromeda that I was trying not to let influence that decision for me. The Quarians are skilled engineers with one of the largest fleets in the galaxy. Each of their vessels has been repaired, restocked, and armed for confrontation with the Reapers. Admiral Zal Chorus. When Admiral Zal Chorus sacrificed his vessel to save a live ship, the civilian fleet thought they'd lost their leader. After Commander Shepard brought Zal Chorus back, he passionately argued that the safest action for the civilian fleet was to stay with the flotilla. His captains rallied and stayed. The story of Zalcoris' miraculous survival on geth-infested Rannoch has spread throughout the flotilla, making him a reluctant hero as he mourns the loss of his ship and crew. All right. Um, okay. I guess talk to people? Thank you for your rescue efforts, Commander. I'm glad I could help. Whatever our disagreements, Admiral Chorus is an excellent commander. He just might save the civilian fleet. What do you need? I'll let you get back to work. We do have another mission on Rannoch. Thank you, Commander. Uh, I saw Legion standing over here. Shepard Commander. We'll talk later. Nothing new there. Which makes me even more concerned that we have uh, made an enemy. I'm ready to hit the Reaper base whenever you are, Shepard. Talk to you later, Tally. I don't know what kind of an enemy we made because um, we're not in the sea, so it's definitely not a sea anemone. Um, but. I worry. All right. Um, <clears throat> out of curiosity, and I don't want spoilers, but I tend to run around and talk to everyone after every time we get back to the ship. Is it worth doing? Or should I do a couple of missions and then talk to people? Admiral Corus has the civilian fleet back in position. And just in time. I hope we can help the Corians. Looking at them, they're like us if we fail. We won't fail. Damn right we won't. Commander? <laughs> we move faster than C. My cousin Dorn from Navteel Vas. Grugel, Grie, Griegelt. Commander Shepard, the civilian fleet is grateful you have returned our admiral to us. I mourn those who fell on the homeworld, but Zalcoris stopped many vessels from flying past the waiting guns of the Geth. The admiral told me you met my cousin, Dorn's, Dorn Hast, on Rannoch. It means much to me that Dorn was not alone when he passed. Thank you, Commander, for all that you have done. Yours most sincerely, Captain Navteel Vas Griegelt. Sometimes you get some new dialogue related to the mission just done. But with that dialogue, I, okay. I just, I'm wondering if, um, cause having played Dragon Age, you would usually still get that dialogue. It just would be sort of out of place because you wouldn't have just done that mission, so. We'll try to do it fast, though. Creepy stun flyers. Whose ships look like some sort of cockroach wasp thing. Wait, they're flying in spell jammers? What's going on, Edie? I am assisting Engineer Adams with his repair of the drive core shielding. Nah, I should leave you to it then. We can converse if you like, Shepard. It is a routine proceed. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? what happened? I don't like the sound of that. Unless you have strong feelings about gamma radiation. Not funny, Edie. I almost had you. I will alter my human chronometer appropriately for better timing. Oh, 
Hello, Shepard. Edie's jokes. Nice job on the rescue mission, Commander. The mm. Korean civilians are getting hammered out there. Apparently, putting a big ass gun on an agriculture ship doesn't magically turn it into a dreadnought. Who knew? You don't agree with the Korean's arming their live ships? No, the gun's nice, but without armor, they're just glass cannons. They are also more likely to be targeted when armed. The Geth would have ignored unarmed civilian ships as tactically insignificant. Hmm. Okay. If you're there is that. A planet requires strapping guns to your kid's school bus. Maybe it's a bad plan. Well, hopefully hmm. Admiral Corus. I mean, maybe you're just in the world of Mad Max. If you're strapping guns to your kid's school bus. Commander. For invasion purposes. That seems very Mad Max to me. Alright, we go see the fishies. I'm gonna try and uh, go through and visit people as quickly as I can. Hello, fishies. Is the fishies in the fish tank? I still don't understand why that's there. It's horrifying. What? Did you see that? I activated that, and then when I activated the hamster, it yelled at the hamster. It didn't do it again. I didn't know they were going to interact with one another. That was horrifying and amazing. I wonder how often it does that. Nope, that's port. Caden? Caden's in the chair. Hey, hon. What's up? Good news. I've tracked down some of the people I was looking for. The recruits you taught? Hmm. Found J-Squad. Black Ops. They're holed up making a stand in the Midwest, near Chicago, I think he said. Connected them with Anderson so they can help the resistance. It's a relief. Hope more turn up. Hey there. Hey there. Just checking in. I'm glad. Say, you, uh, you left without waking me. Oh! Didn't have the heart. <laughs> well, thanks, but next time, uh, wake me. Ah! Flirty conversation! How's everything lining up? How's everything lining up? I mean, you tell me. How's everything lining up? <laughs> that was a, a very, um, suggestive dialogue. And I like it. Nobody's in here. How you make him is entirely up to you. Oh, but he's so cute when he's sleeping. Shirtless. Feeling okay, come on. On a hospital bed. Well, but I don't want him on the hospital bed all the time. But the shirtless sleeping. Synthetics do not evolve. You are limited by your programming. Nothing changes. That is not accurate. I can modify my own programming if I choose. That is not evolution. That is simply an upgrade. But it would be my upgrade. I would choose the manner in which I wish to change. And what if your upgrade endangers others? All machines eventually see organics as a threat. Only those organics who would cause me hmm. harm. My right to self-defense endangers no one. What rights do you have? You are just a tool. And what right do your people have to subjugate the other races of your time? Yeah, and Portico. We dominated. They were weaker. Our will prevailed as evolution intended. And synthetic life has attained true consciousness, as was intended. 
Hardly. True life is more than a code upgrade. It is shaped by the forces around us. Machines are immune to those forces. You exist outside of nature. We are a part of this cosmos, whether you like it or not. But synthetics do not evolve. You are limited by your programming. Nothing changes. That is not accurate. I can modify my own programming if I choose. That is not evolution. That is simply an upgrade. The thing is, I agree with Edie, and I think Shepard does too. The problem is, the way they evolved made them a threat. Which is why we made the decision we made. My right to self-defense endangers no one. What rights do you have? You are just a tool. And what right do your people have to self She's not just a tool. The problem is that when we gave the Geth free will, they ended up still being a problem. And now their free will has possibly been taken away and they, because they went and put themselves under the control of the Reapers. Machines are immune to those forces. You exist outside of nature. We are a part of this cosmos, whether you like it or not. But synthetics do not evolve. So when we helped the Geth, part of that was trying to, like... That is not accurate. Anyway. I can modify my own programming if I can. I don't remember, but we tried to help them. That is simply I'm, I'm supporting Edie. I can't believe you put the lives of your crew in the hands of this machine. She's proven to be trustworthy. You still have some proving to do. Now I suggest you agree to disagree and focus on the real threat, which is not on this ship. Yes, Commander. As you wish, Commander. So what we did um, when we helped the Geth was to free them. But I don't remember exactly from what, but uh, from some sort of gestalt or something, I don't remember. But I do know that the intent was that they would be able to make their own decisions. You're not going to talk to me about what I just walked in on? How's it going? It has been. Um, it was because me personally, I'm like, yes, I always take the like good guy position. Uh, like, yeah, I support the, the nascent uh, intelligence as a species. Um, but then I had to play it in the consideration of the experiences that Shepard has been through and the things that he has to consider going forward. And I had to go with, nope, nope, we have to wipe them out. They are too much of a potential threat. We can't trust them. And we don't have the, we don't have the luxury of being able to give them that chance while we're trying to save life in this galaxy. him being quite so objectionable in the previous game. Nothing to report, Commander. Donnelly, I used to like you. Come on. I don't like you anymore. Nothing to report. Talking about how you think that you should get with my assistant, and uh, then she points out that you're not my assistant's type, and then he talks about her, her going and, and hooking up with her and 
says if you do manage it, make sure you take video. Ugh. Breaking now, the Exodus cluster under heavy attack. Eden Prime and Terra Nova about to fall. Do we fight for them or join the Salarians at the Horsehead Nebula? How many worlds can we afford to lose? The full analysis tonight in the battle phase. <laughs> Did you not catch that, Mobius? Commander. Well, um, oh, I forgot her name. I'm going to run in there so that I've got the name. Uh, but Donnelly and um, Donnelly and Daniels had some banter when I walked in. And uh, Daniels or uh, Donnelly was talking about I, I missed the very beginning of it, but I, they were talking about my assistant. I gather from uh, some one of them mentioning that they were uh, that the person they were talking about was a communication specialist. Attention all hands, Major Alenko is ordering all command crew to quarters for some needed downtime. All personnel not in quarters in 15 minutes may be subject to appropriate tongue lashings. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, and Donnelly was being the way that he has been in Mass Effect 3, which is a bit of a uh, um, over-sexualizing females. Um, and so Daniels responded by telling him that he wasn't the type of the person that he was talking about. And his response to that was to talk about how, oh, well, maybe you just want to get with her instead. And I think she said something like, what's well, wrong with that? Um, but basically, it ended with him saying, well, if you do manage to get with her, make sure you take video. Which was, like, he's just had a string of, like, completely inappropriate commentary this entire game. And he wasn't like that in Mass Effect 2 that I recall. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've got Tali somewhere. Yeah, we've got Tali. She can be the engineer. We don't need freaking Donnelly. I've got to say, I enjoyed that last mission on Rhino. You got to shoot things. I guess a defenseless jamming tower and Esteban here feels like a big man. Hey, the Kodiak is a transport, not a fighter. It's for dropping jarheads like you into hot zones. And if you stow the I ship these two so hard. Picking you up again. Doesn't hurt to go over the weapon roster one more time. Shuttle's primed for the next drop. Shuttle's primed for the next drop. We did pick up a new armory thing, but I don't know what it was. Doesn't see it indeed sound like marine flirting. Like they are so into one another. It's cute. I don't know what we picked up. I know we picked something up, but I didn't catch what it was. I have no idea. We picked up something. I know we did. I saw it get picked up, but I don't know what it was. Eh, whatever. James Cortez and Garrus Talley. Yes. And, you know, Shepard Caden. The weapons roster. We just picked up the, the javelin. I'm going to upgrade the javelins to javelin two. And then javelin three. And why not javelin four? Uh, I can't do five quite yet. What is the javelin? It is a 
sniper rifle, so we're not going to be the ones using it, that's for sure, because the Indra 5 is amazing. The Javelin 4, currently. Called the Javelin by Alliance Marines, this geth weapon holds a reservoir of ferrofluid magnetically drawn into the firing chamber and expelled at lethal speeds. Like a high-pressure water jet, the ferrofluid cuts through nearly anything it hits with so much heat that it resembles a beam of light causing terrible wounds, so it's basically like a sniper rifle, like a laser sniper rifle. Um, I like my uh, automatic sniper rifle personally, but nice to know. Javelins and tongue lashings. Mm-hmm. James is a cutie. I definitely have to play through again and just, like, romance him. Um. And we know the dog's name is Sophia now. Robo Super Dog is what it says on the... Yeah, it says Robo Super Dog. But apparently, its name is Sophia. Uh, th that was the last of the places and people to speak to. Yes, we spoke to places. Um, see, yeah, I think they were talking about trainer. Okay, um, the Joinal. Priority mission, Rannoch. The Reaper base controlling the Geth has been located, but jamming towers prevent conventional orbital bombardment. Land on Rannoch and use a prototype targeting laser to enable the Normandy to destroy the Reaper base. We also still have the Geth fighter squadrons on Rannoch. But we definitely don't have time to really start one. Although I do have points to spend, and we've been saving for Reeve, level 6. Effectiveness against armor and barriers increased by 75%, or increased damage by 30%, duration by 30%, and damage protection bonus by 15%, which I think would be more useful for me. And the way that I play. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, we'll toss in an increase to overcharge or overload, which I actually have been using lately. I never used to use overload. What are my scores here? I don't know. They don't have numbers. Still, very Paragon. Not a whole lot of Renegade. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should save. That's a thing I should do, right? Should we peek at the... mission? All right, so we have the shut down the Geth server and destroy the Reaper base as, as the two missions still to do on Rannoch. I think we have to start with the comm hub. Apparently, I'm, I'm going to put us down and then save, and that'll probably be the end of things. But OK, we're fighting geths. Ooh, 100 biddies. Thank you, Elixie. I'm definitely taking Caden. My secondary decision is I would generally go with Tali because Caden and Tali are my my peeps. Um, and we're up against Gath. I feel like Edie would not be a bad choice and James would not be a bad choice just because James is nice to look at. Um, all right, take, take my team.
Yeah, I take James and I've taken James and Caden both before. Um, that could be heard in many different ways, I think. <laughs> Understood, Admiral Ron. We're almost at the server. Keep it posted. <laughs> What's the next? We remain undetected on encrypted Geth channels. Resistance is likely only within the server. Within? It's that big? You misunderstand. Direct virtual interface is necessary to extract Geth from the server. You must enter our consensus. Wait, what? You want me to virtually interact with the Geth? That kind of tech isn't even on the market. This can't be safe. We're we're going Tron for this mission? I'm not a machine. How do I go into a virtual world? Your species has experimented with virtual interfaces. You saw this on Project Overlord. I saw how it almost unleashed a rogue AI human hybrid on the galaxy. We have refined the interface they created and have equipment from Normandy to facilitate safe contact. We request your trust. We've had discussion on this stream of how much do I trust Legion? Legion agreed with my analysis about the need to destroy the Geths. that were being upgraded by the Reapers. And Legion seems to be themselves after having escaped from the, the Reaper reprogramming stuff. Edie doesn't seem to have a problem with Legion. And I think Edie would have a problem with Legion if he had been fully permanently like corrupted by the Reapers. We can't take the chance that all of that entire Geth army, like we, we can't risk trusting the entire Geth army. We can risk trusting a single individual. I have your back, Legion. Even if I don't quite understand why you need it. You are an unknown. This is an advantage. Geth security is not adept at targeting organic thought processes. While we occupy the system's intrusion countermeasures, you will disable the squadrons by removing Geth from the server. <sighs> this better work. This had better be worth flying straight through a war zone. We have compromised local Geth systems. They will remain dormant until our work is complete. There is little time. We will bypass security while you secure safe landing. Wait, you're not going to... Wait, what? Let's set the shuttle down by the cliff. I really hope that Legion doesn't get pulled into the Gestalt. Although, why? I mean, we're about to go enter the, Geth, the Gestalt ourselves. This unit has no need for parachutes, meat bag. Next, next time we play, we're going to be doing Tron. I wonder how Tron-y it will be. This cutscene is longer than I anticipated, but also there was the... This is it. Difficult decision. Yes. 
hostile Geth fighter squadrons are networked to this server. Due to restricted resources, it is best if you connect alone. Wait, Kate and Tali aren't coming with me? Let's do it. Well, actually, that's probably good. Um, Caden? Tali? Kill Legion if I don't come back. <laughs> like, I'm taking this leap of faith. I'm extending trust. If that trust is violated, make sure they die. Shepard Commander, access movement during an upload is discouraged. It really is so Tron inspired. Oh my gosh. The the scanning was at least. Shepherd Commander, we acknowledge your integration into this server. We welcome you to our consensus. What is this? Much We've installed filters to allow you to make visual sense of this less your mind perceives our world as something familiar. I wouldn't call this familiar. Where are you? Here. You look different. We have made ourselves visually distinct for your convenience. What about Geth already in here? You will perceive Geth as surveillance footage, audio logs, sensor records. We do not require bodies as our software communicates. This is a long cutscene. Our hardware is merely a tool. This is our true world. As we remove Geth, it will grow dark. And what does turning off the lights do to the Geth back in the real world? The Geth fighter squadrons communicate with platforms on their spacecraft via this server. We will sever that connection. We will ensure there are no transfers or backups. This server will fall silent. The sooner this place shuts down, the better. Yes, create your lives, remain at rest. Our goals must be met. There are two communication nodes on this server. We must access them to disable the hostile Geth spiders. We must protect your exit port, but you will not be alone. We will maintain contact and assist. This is only the second game I've ever played where I've gone to the grid. The, the first, like... The, um... Kingdom Hearts 3 is the only other game that I've ever played where I went to the grid <laughs> because there's an actual like Tron level in Kingdom Hearts 3. Amazing. Amazing. Um, but it is the end of stream time, so we will pick up with the next Mass Effect stream. Uh, and have an entire freaking Tron experience. Um, just wow. I'm excited. I have something to look forward to in two weeks. It is the perfect cliffhanger. Um, because I will not be streaming next weekend. I did, Portico, I did. Um, I will be streaming tomorrow and then I will not be back again until the Monday after. I am taking off uh, all of next week from streaming so that I can have a break because I need a break. <laughs> but um, I definitely left something to come back for, which is Troniness. I'm, I'm excited. I did not know there was a level like that in this game. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, I need the break. And so I decided to, to do it. I'm still streaming the Mondays, though. Just it'll be Tuesday to, to Sunday and I, that I take that break. And hopefully it refreshes me so that uh, when my actual like winter break, when work is shut for an entire week, uh, when that happens, I, I hope to actually still be able to stream. Um, although that is like holiday time. That's like when people celebrate Christmas and New Year's and, and whatnot. Um, but it's also technically the two year 
anniversary of the first time I streamed, which was on December 26th of 2020. Uh, I don't know yet what my plan is as far as doing a two-year sort of celebration-y thing. Might do something in January w when my actual like affiliate anniversary is, but we'll see. I should say the thank yous. Um, first, thank you to the mods uh, for being here. Um, Elixie, thanks for showing up and throwing the, th the 100 bits. Um, subscribers, Rykar, Be Right UK. I love that people are getting to 23 months at this point. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and, and yeah, we're, we're going to be hitting, we're going to be hitting two years here real soon. And I'm going to, I'm going to need to do something for it. Um, so we'll see. I don't know yet what, what, what that's going to be, but I'll try to come up with something. Um, and, um, yeah, Elixir and Be Right UK and Be Right UK and Be Right UK. Thank you for the bits. Ah! Um, so yes, I, I my, uh, yeah, and thank you everybody who who hung out, who chatted, who, you know, if you were here and you never said a thing in chat, thank you for lurking, um, and thank you for bearing with all of the um, internet service prevention. Um, let me see who is on. Uh, Sundays are always kind of hit and miss. Um, well, we've got some, we've got a number of people playing the new Pokemon game. Do people have interest in that? Actually, there's a lot of people on right now. Hmm. I'm spoiled for choice. Okay, because there are a bunch of people on playing that game and there's tons of people on, I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm going to throw us over to Damien Haas because I quite enjoy watching Damien play games. And so um, I'm going to be selfish and we're going to go over there. Um, so if you would like to do the raid call when we get there, uh, you know, it, it's there. Um, and yeah, so we're going to pop on over to, to, to Damien Haas, uh, say hello to the Clever Corps when we get there um, by shouting Rogue Raid and throwing daggers at them. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope I see you tomorrow night. If I don't, I hope I see you back again uh, a week later um, or, you know, sometime around on the Discord or on the Internet somewhere. Um, it was lovely to have you here. Until I see you again, get out there and do some shenanigans.